<laughs> welcome back to the show. Uh, I want to welcome a very special guest, and, and you know, sometimes, Kara, you know, this show is, you know, lighthearted, and we like to have fun, but every now and then there's a story you can't ignore. Our next guest, uh, Eddie James Lowry, was convicted of a crime. As a matter of fact, it was rape some 20 years ago, and just this past April, he was exonerated due to DNA evidence that they found, and uh, an innocent man now can uh, have his name cleared. So let's bring to, to the stage right now, Eddie James Lowry. Um, you know, Eddie, I, I, I guess the first thing that, that, that I have to think about when something like this happens to somebody, you know, what's going through your mind when you know you're innocent, but yet you're having to go through all of this no matter what anybody says or what anybody thinks? Well, it's very painful. It's very hard to understand why this is happening to you, you know. Um, you know uh, I bring maybe up the, the religious part of it, you know, I'm, I'm mad at God, you know, why did you let this happen to me, you know, if, if you're out there. Uh, um, those are things that I have to work, I had to work through in order to, uh, to get where I am today. Um, it was very uh, painful, you know, I lost my, my family, my daughter. Um, uh, when, I, when I did get out and I saw my, my family for the first time, I realized how much, um, how many years I've missed seeing them because I seen how how old they I mean how much they aged mm -hmm. you know and I wasn't there for that um, and just it was really hard to um, to understand and to accept um, but through with through uh, uh, good uh, support in my family and church and things like that I was able to uh, uh, overcome a lot of things Eddie how long ago did you get out I got out you know, uh, this all happened in 1981 when I was 22 years old I was uh, in the U.S. Army. Um, I spent 10 years in Lansing. Um, uh, I got out in 1991. Uh, I spent the rest of my time. You were in a Kansas City prison? I was or? in uh, Lansing, yeah, in, in, in uh, Kansas. It's Kansas, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> spent all my time there, uh, the whole 10 years. And the funny thing about it is, um, when I was in the county jail, this, uh, this, this, this black guy that I, that I met who it wasn't me. No, not you. No. <laughs> he was. He was. We, we became really good friends, and he told me. He said, "Eddie, man, you're in. You're in there on a serious charge. You know, it's a sex offense. You know, rape." And he goes, "I would not go to Lansing and tell those guys you're in there on a sex offense." So when I went to Lansing, and uh, these guys that are going to see the show are going to find out now mm. uh, that the whole time I was in there, I was telling them I was in there for robbery. Huh. So I'm like five years. Um, they're like, hey, Ed, man, you're doing a long time you know, for five years, I mean, for robbery. And I'd you say, stole I don't a lot know, of I don't stuff. Know, I don't know what it is. And I, these yeah. guys uh, huh. keep passing me. But actually, I was going before the parole board and telling the parole board that I didn't commit the crime. And they were passing me for not accepting responsibility for the crime. And so it wasn't until I was able to um, uh, actually um, go out and, and I, I got on a men's softball team where I would... Um, uh, go downtown and play. I my, got my custody lowered, you know, after like six years and started going downtown in Leavenworth and playing on the men's softball team and, it, and that gave me the, the, the taste of freedom again because mm. I'd been behind the wall so long, you know, I almost became institutionalized. I really didn't mm. want to leave. Um, but when I got outside the walls and got on my custody lowered and start, started going downtown playing softball, it um, opened up my eyes to uh, other people's family come in and rooting us on and it brought back things that uh, and it jogged uh, memories in my life and it made me really buckle down and decide I'm just gonna do what they want me to do in order to get out. So really prior to softball, you actually felt safer in prison? Y yeah. In some way? I was, I, well, when they, when, they, when they offered me uh, uh, to lower my custody in order to go out and uh, build a, play softball down, downtown, I refused. And they said, well, uh, we're gonna take you out of the, out of the dorm I was living in at the time uh, and um, uh, take my, you know, move me to a different cell house for refusing, you know, to go out there. And I didn't want to do that, so I just went ahead and uh, took the custody change and went out to the uh, minimum security area and was able to start running 10Ks on the, on, you know, downtown and playing on the softball team. And I'd be, down, I'd be um, running downtown and um, just by myself. And just the, the, the feeling of freedom, even though I was locked up, I was running down the street by myself, yeah. you know, and, and just looking at the, everything I could see. Have now, you ever, t I'm sorry, have you ever talked about it publicly before? Um, yeah, I work with um, the Innocent Project program 
Uh, actually, uh, Barry Sheck, Mr. Barry Sheck, and uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Newfield, and my local lawyer, Mr. Barry Clark, um, uh, worked on my case for me and got me exonerated. It was over a long period of time because I got out in 1991. It wasn't, and um, it was it was in two, uh, it was in 03 when I actually got exonerated in April okay. 03. Um, um, but uh, Barry read my case. And it got me. He I, I, he actually has the Innocent Project program out of New York City, and I became the 126th person to be exonerated through DNA testing. And we're wow. up well over uh, 200 people, 200 men right. and women who have been exonerated through DNA testing now for crimes they did not commit. It's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Um, we got to wrap things up uh, real quick, Eddie. But uh, I tell you, you know, um, we have a lot of problems in the legal justice system, obviously, and. There's a lot of people running around that should be locked up, and then we, there's a lot of people like yourself that were locked up and uh, shouldn't have been. Uh, you're a great story. We want to thank you for sharing it and with all bravery. of us. Uh, thank you. We really appreciate it. Uh, give it up for Eddie James Lowry, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Up next on After Hours, Darren mixes it up with the ladies from the KC Roller Warriors. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.